Hello and welcome to Enchanted Rose Costumes. My name is Marika and today I have part two of my constellation gown for you. If you haven't seen part one of my constellation gown series, I definitely recommend you click the link above or you can head down to the description and I will have a link for you there as well. So without further ado, let's get started. The pattern I used for the bodice is the ladies evening gown on page 133 of Authentic Victorian Fashion Patterns. I enlarged the pattern by using the apportioning scales provided in the back of the Voice of Fashion. Each scale is a different size and your bust or waist measurement determines which scale or ruler you would use. I will leave a link for all the books mentioned in the video in the description if you're interested in trying out this method for yourself. To enlarge the bodice pattern to my size, I selected the ruler that corresponded with my bust measurement with my corset on. I then began transferring the marks shown in the book onto my paper. Beginning at the top, I placed all my vertical marks and afterwards I used my ruler to square across the page. I then began placing horizontal marks as shown in the book. Once I finished placing the marks, I then played connect the dots to create the outline of my pattern. With all the pieces enlarged to my size, it was now time for a mock-up. I was thrilled with how my first mock-up came out. I only had to make a few minor changes like dart placement and a couple of the seams in the back, but other than that, the pattern fit me right out of the book, which was amazing. Following my gown design, I then sketched out my plan for the placement of my drape bodice onto my mock-up. Once I was satisfied with my changes, I then transferred all of them to the pattern and began cutting out my real fabric, starting with the outer layer of my foundation bodice. I wanted to add that while drafting the bodice, some of the areas did have seam allowance drafted in, while other parts of the pattern I had to add it while cutting out, which was slightly odd. Once I'd finished cutting out all the pieces, I then placed those pieces on top of the lining and cut them out as well. And to satisfy my inner geek, I decided to use TARDIS fabric because it is perfect for the inside of a constellation themed gown. And because in my opinion, lining should be fun. With all the foundation pieces cut out, I placed the lining layer on top of the corresponding outer layer with the wrong sides facing each other and stitched around the edges. For the front of the bodice, I also stitched just inside the darts. <laughs> 
Once all the pieces were flat lined, I then finished the edges with my serger. And as I mentioned in part one, serging is not a historical technique that was used to finish the edges. It is just something that I picked up while working in theater. Once I'd finished all the edges, I then stitched the back of the bodice together. When sewing the princess seams together, I placed the convex piece on the bottom to help ease the fabric into the concave piece. With the back of the bodice sewn together, I moved over to the front bodice darts. I was very careful when I was pinning these, making sure that everything matched up evenly. Next, I moved over to the iron and pressed open all the seams. To help everything lie flat, I also snipped into the seam allowance a little bit to release any tension. And for the darts, I cut down the center of each dart until I was about half an inch away from the top and then pressed them open. Next, I cut various lengths of bones for all the seams and the darts, and I finished my bones just below my bust line. I then cut lengths of half inch wide twill tape to create a casing for the bone to sit in. Once all the casings were cut, I then stitched around the edges, leaving one side open so I could insert the bone into the casing. I then whipped the bone to the seam allowance, trying to keep everything taut as I stitched. After I'd finished sewing in all the bones, I finished the front edge of my bodice by folding it over by a quarter of an inch and then folding it over by a half inch to create a boning channel. And then I stitch that into place. To finish the neckline of my bodice, I cut one inch wide lengths of bias fabric from the same fabric as my outer layer and stitched it a half inch away from the edge. <laughs> 
and then I pressed the bias edging to the inside of the bodice and pinned it in place, taking care with the corners to make sure I had a nice clean finish. I then pressed up the seam allowance along the bottom and then pinned and whip stitched the edge down. Next, I marked the placement for my hook and eyes along one side of the center front closure. I sewed them on an inch apart and alternated the hook and eyes from the top of the bodice to the middle of the bodice as an extra security to make sure it didn't accidentally come apart when I was wearing it. After I'd finished one side, I then marked the placement along the opposite side of the center front. And once that was done, it was time to start draping the fashion layer of the bodice. First, I started by marking both the bias and straight up grain on my fabric. Working with my fabric on the bias, I began pinning it to my mannequin starting at the shoulder seam. I then continued pinning and smoothing the fabric until I was happy with the shape. Now, I thought I had filmed the entire draping process, but when I started editing this, I realized I only captured the back piece. If you are wanting to create a bodice like this, my entire bodice is draped on the bias, and there is lots of information on how to do that on the interwebs. Before removing the draped pattern, I added notches, double checked the green lines, marked pleats in the front, and labeled the top and bottom of the pieces so I wouldn't be confused because that hasn't happened to me before. And then I transferred my draped pattern onto paper with a tracing wheel. With my pattern transferred over, I then traced over the lines and labeled all my patterns with the piece, the project, the year, the hip, bust, and waist measurement, and how many I needed to cut. I then made a quick mock-up to check my pattern and then cut out my taffeta. Now, because the back of my gown is fitted and shaped, I made a quick facing piece so I could finish the top edge cleanly without any stitching lines showing. After I finished sewing the facing to the back of the bodice, I graded the seam, and then I edge stitched along the right side of the facing to keep it from showing on the right side of the bodice. Once I'd finished both the back bodice pieces, I then cut out the front of the bodice. Now instead of cutting a separate facing this time for the front bodice, I cut the facing with the fabric because it was a straight line. <laughs> 
Next, I lined up all my marks for my pleats and then pinned everything in place. Now to make things easier on myself, I kept my pattern close so I could reference it as I pinned everything together because some of the marks did overlap each other. And with all the pleats done, I set it aside until later, because now it's time to start on the hidden center front opening. The design for my bodice closure was actually greatly inspired by an 1892 bodice that is from the Museum of London. I actually came across it on the Timothy Long Fashion Curator Instagram, which I shall link down below if you're interested in seeing that bodice. I used netting for the backing of the first, second, and third layers to act as a stabilizer. The first layer is a lace, and the second and third layers are chiffon that I pleated on the bias. And the fourth and fifth layers are the pleated taffeta. To finish the top edge of the chiffon layers, I unpin the chiffon and then stitch the chiffon and netting with the right sides together. And just like the facing earlier, I then graded the seam and edge stitched along the right side of the netting. And then I repleated the chiffon layers. Now something that I noticed when I removed the chiffon layers for the first time is that I lost all the pleats when there was no tension on them anymore. So to keep myself from having to readjust the pleats every time I wore the gown, I added hidden tacks throughout the pleats to keep them in place. After adding the tacks, I then stitched around the raw edge of the chiffon, securing the pleats in place. To finish the raw edge of the chiffon, I stitched a 1 inch wide strip of bias fabric around the right side. And then I folded the bias strip over to the wrong side of the fabric and stitched it in place. And I repeated this on all the raw edges. 
On the back of the bodice, I pleated chiffon over a triangle of netting and then stitched it in place. With the foundation bodice back on my mannequin, I then pinned the first layer of taffeta over the base and pinned and smoothed everything into place as I worked. Now when I first started the foundation bodice, I used the drape bodice instructions in the Authentic Victorian Dressmaking Techniques book. Now according to the book, the shoulder and side seam of the foundation bodice should be left open for easier fittings and finishes. But when I tried it, I found it was more of a hassle to have the side seam open while draping the bodice on top, and so I closed that and only left the shoulder open. Once the first layer of the bodice was pinned in place, I then secured it to the foundation with a mixture of running and back stitches and these stitches will all be hidden once I add the other layers. And then I repeated this process with the other draped bodice layers. I just made a mistake on the bodice and I'm kind of kicking myself over it. I cut too far into my seam allowance and well, cut fast past my seam allowance and into my fabric. And so now I have to piece this. So when I sewed this piece on earlier, I cut or I didn't sew this far enough over. This is where my side seam is supposed to be. As you can see, I sewed this here and this fashion fabric or fabric that you're supposed to be able to see I've cut into. So to remedy this I'm going to have to add fabric to piece it which it's unfortunate but you know what piecing is period. It happens to the best of us. So I've got that there and then another little mistake is this right here and this right here. Same issue. I cut up too far, but whatever. We're just gonna piece it and move on, right? So to try and disguise the piecing as much as possible, I made sure that I cut the fabric on the same grain so the sheen would be the same. I then used an applique stitch to finish the seam. Once the side seams were both sewn, I then started stitching the hidden closure layers with a mixture of whip stitches and back stitches. <laughs> 
And once I had finished stitching down each layer, I then added hooks and eyes to the ends of each layer. To finish the bottom of the bodice, I folded the taffeta around the bottom edge of the foundation bodice and whipped everything in place. Now something I have forgotten to add was the waist tape and the hooks along the bottom of the bodice to help keep the bodice from shifting. I still plan on adding them in the future, but I just haven't had a chance to yet. I really hope you've enjoyed watching the construction of the bodice. I had a blast putting this one together. I was kind of unsure when I was first putting them together. I wasn't exactly sure how it was all going to turn out, but I'm thrilled with how it all came out and I'm really excited to make more hidden closures in the future. If you have any questions or comments about part two, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them for you. If you are new to my channel and you liked what you saw today, feel free to click the subscribe button because we have fun here. Now part three will be coming out shortly and that is going to be all on the sleeves and the stars. So until next time, I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!